Welcome y'all, Wes DIY Food Plot Pro, thanks for joining us. We're out in a soybean field today. We're out here scouting and looking around. How often should we be going in to our high quality sets where we're trying to kill mature bucks? Now I know a lot of us, if you're on this channel, you're more than likely a food plotter. So you probably have a food plot that you're wanting to check on in there. You're having something in there that you want to see as far as are the acorns falling, the white oaks, the red oaks, any new scrapes. It's really tempting to spend an awful lot of time inside the woods this time of the year. It's a, it's a fun time. It's something that, uh, that we all enjoy doing. I'm a whitetail guide. I have a whitetail outfitter and I can absolutely relate to, to this and as I get older, as I have more experience with this, I have a lot better understanding than what I did several years ago. When I first started doing this, I was ate up with it. I loved it. I wanted to be out in that field. I wanted to look at the acorns. I wanted to look at the scrapes. I wanted to find every scrape that was there. I wanted to check my cameras all the time. You know, just really excited to be out in the woods. And while that excitement is still there, as I get older, I get a little bit wiser in the aspect of make sure that you don't spend too much time in the woods this time of the year. The issue is, is when you're, when you're spending a ton of time in those woods, you're having reactions in those woods. So one really good thing about the cell cameras, in my opinion, is they let me see Every time that I went in there, there was a negative reaction across almost all the farms, even farms where people, folks lived on, that you would think that you might not have that kind of reaction. There was a negative reaction every single time I went into a place, whether I was hanging cameras, checking cameras, looking for scrapes, looking for acorns, checking on food plots. Any and all of that stuff was leaving a negative reaction for my whitetail. So when I used to run non-cell cameras, uh, and I still do run a lot of them, it's real easy not to really pay attention to the date. You're just flipping through as many pictures as you can looking for that shooter buck, right? Well, when you have those cell cameras and they're sending it straight to your phone, it's a lot easier for you to be, okay, well tonight, you know, there's a ton of deer there. In the morning, there's a ton of deer there. You go in there, to do whatever you're going to do that night very few pictures the next morning very few pictures might recover in 36 hours might recover in 12 24 hours depending on how your deer react to that i had some places where it was 36 to 48 hours before mature bucks would show back up on my sets after i went into that set to do that work so i think it's something that we really need to be made aware of is why tail hunters is to limit the amount of time that we're spending inside those woods. Because there's no question about it, there is a negative reaction every time we go in there. And it is so tempting to go in there all the time and to really keep intel on what's going on in there. You know, you can't see acorns falling from the camera. So that's something that you physically have to get out in those areas and check. But for the most part, the way that I've done this this year, and I started, you know, last year a lot, was really going in less and less and less. And at this point, I'm going in about once a month. That's all I'm going in. Whatever I have to do in there, I'm trying to get all that done in that one single time. So if I'm checking plots, pulling cards, cleaning out the blinds, checking ratchet straps, I'm trying to do every bit of that as I go in on that one time instead of going in there multiple, multiple, multiple times, trying to limit the amount of time that I spend on those farms, on those mature buck set. And I think that sets us up to be better off in the future because I know a lot of folks go in and, and it's so easy and so tempting to do is go in all the time and you're, you know, you got a weekend off and boy, I hadn't checked the camera in full five days or a week and I better drive in there and check the camera and see how my brassicas are doing and all that stuff. And we get to going in too much and we're bumping mature bucks is what we're doing when we're doing that. It's just a, a word of warning and a word of caution from what I've seen over the years running on the 1800 acres that I run on here in Western Kentucky is make certain that you're not a permanent visitor on that farm, that you're not in there all the time. You try to limit the number of times that you're going in there in, until you get ready to start hunting for that mature buck. And one thing that's really going to do is your neighbors are likely going to continue to go in and go in and go in and go in. 
and then your spot's gonna act more of a sanctuary spot and the whitetails know that. There's no question that they feel that pressure that's coming on them and they are going to move to a place where they are not pressured. So if your neighbors are hunting every single day, that's a great thing for you. Those deer know it. There's no question about it. They know they're going in and out of there. No matter how good of an access spot you have, I've seen very few setups over the years where you could truly get in and get out without spooking any single deer, uh, regardless day or night. So they're spooking deer, they're educating deer, and those mature bucks are not gonna take that pressure. They're gonna move on to your farm and then you're gonna have a chance to hunt those mature deer. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like and subscribe button.